Hey everybody, uh, it is Micah, and I am on YouTube, West Virginia Rail Fan, and uh, same over on Instagram, so make sure you drop a follow on there, and uh, make sure you subscribe over here. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than normal. Uh, we are going to be looking at the CSX uh, Piney Creek Yard in Raleigh, West Virginia. Uh, this is a branch line yard, but without further ado, let's go ahead and roll the footage. So as we start approaching, we're going to notice some of the buildings around the yard. You'll see some junk, such as excess rails. Uh, that is to replace some of the aging rail. Uh, you'll see yard tracks branching off here. Again, all of the typical yard stuff that you'd see. Uh, we have two cuts of coal cars here. That building over to your left is actually the yard office that they operate out of and the uh, crew paperwork area and where they call the guys to get on the train at and uh, now this building right here was actually built in 1925 by the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad uh, to replace the aging building that they had had there uh, and this is the other end of the yard where the trains will come in from uh, Prince and Quinamont that I just circled around uh, of course, something to note is all the low-income residents that do live around here. Uh, just a sign of a typical West Virginia community. As we approach, you can see some more equipment over to the left. And another cool thing to do is look kind of inside those coal cars when you get a chance to. Is they're actually pretty waterlogged right now because of all the rain that we've gotten here. But you'll see some coal and some stuff. And look at that coaling tower right there. This is my favorite thing of why I actually did this video today. Uh, I'm not sure what year it was built, but it is one of the last few remaining coal towers around here. Of course, you'll also notice our uh, little caboose there, which is something that's really cool. I like it. I think it's very nice that they still have it there. They use it as a uh, shoving platform when bringing these empty coal car cuts in. Now, another thing to notice of the aging of this yard is to certainly look in between the coal cars there. Uh, you'll notice how small of a gap there is between, in a lot of these modern rail yards, there is a lot bigger uh, area between the cars just for safety. But around here with small radius curves and just aging infrastructure and larger cars on aging infrastructure, it uh, does create some interesting scenes like this where cars can hit each other like that which is something that I find interesting. Uh, now, in just a second, we will get to see right where I stopped, and that's because I do end up pulling up a little bit uh, because I was getting some uh, signal interference, so I just went ahead and pulled up. But now we'll go back the other direction. Uh, as you can see, there's it branches off a little more. Uh, just a typical small branch line yard. Something that I find interesting, it's in located in Raleigh, West Virginia, which is near Beaver. Uh, and as we get a little closer here, again, you can see the calling tower, uh, caboose, and everything in its glory. I just, I personally like to imagine times when the CNO Railroad was operating this, and it was bloom uh, just absolutely full of traffic and trains and the economy was alive here and all was well uh, this is again looking towards the way that you'd go to uh, Prince with the calling tower uh, and there is a second clip here that I'd like to show you all so I'll go ahead and start that right now. Sorry about that. I dropped it. Uh, so you get a little different angle of the caboose here, uh, which again is used as a shoving platform. Now at one point there was up to 10 tracks at some spots here. Uh, that was when the Piney Creek was very busy. At one point uh, from my study, I have noticed that uh, there was over 20 trains a day coming out of a single location with all the mines from the area and I find that very interesting, uh, personally. So we'll go ahead, and as you see, we're back where we came, except on the other side this time. Uh, now this little track that we're seeing here is actually when they bring the loads back from the mine, what they'll use uh, to sort of 
as their track to store everything in because it is the longest track. Uh, and it houses the most cars. So you can fit about 110, I believe they said, on this single track on the left. Uh, now, of course, the empties are staged on these two tracks. Uh, and there are, I think he said at present, about 200 of them. So, uh, these cars will be used at uh, mines such as Affinity, which is a big coal producer here. Uh, now I do I am going to go ahead and stop here uh, just because the signal is getting weak again. Now I do plan on coming back to this location because it is a nice little place to fly your drone at and do activities and I will be back. So there's more to come for this little area but I just thought that you all might find this little yard perspective interesting. Uh, and this is coming off of my DJI Mini 2 uh, drone that I just got. Uh, for any of you who might be watching this wondering if LAAMC or LANC authorization was given, yes it was, and I have the uh, authorization number also for that. Uh, to prove that, if you are interested, I can give that to you. Uh, as we see here though, we come around the curb, back into the yard, and I just think it's amazing to think how many trains have gone over this little piece of rail. It might not seem like much now, but at one time it really was something. And it hurts, I think, a lot of people, you know, when they come home, maybe after moving out of here, like many people did, and seeing the sad stage that a lot of West Virginia is in. But there's also hope for the future here, and I think that's what we need to focus on. Uh, now, you all will get to see a little... Uh, go around to this calling tower in just a second as I work my way over there. Now, I'm not sure if you all can see it on here eventually, but I did have to bring it down uh, to two birds circling me. They, uh, they do not take very kindly to the DJI Mini 2, apparently, which I'm, I don't think you'll be able to see them here, unfortunately, but maybe you will. I haven't really previewed this photo, uh, footage that much to this point, but as you can see here, this coin tower is very unique. Uh, I do believe it is a Fairbanks Morse tower, uh, as many of them from this area are. Now, there is one like this uh, down in Peach Creek, West Virginia, and I do plan on making a trip down there on the Logan subdivision, which should be a little fun trip flying over the yard as I'm doing here. Now this is the point, and there was a bird right there I just saw. This is the point where they were really starting to circle on me. So I went ahead and I stopped the footage, and I brought it on down. So I thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's a little bit of a different perspective, but there is more of this type of content to come. I hope you all enjoyed it very much. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you all later. Bye.